Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Yes, we're still here, still going, still alive and kicking. Well, certainly alive, not so sure about the kicking part. Projects have been a little sparse recently due to the current situation going on in the world right now. 2020 wasn't exactly the best year for theatres in particular, with everything closing down here in the UK, nor was it good for exhibition events, companies that might normally commission a piece of sculpture, public art trials, and basically every field that might contribute towards our bread and butter. But that's why we were so grateful when a project like this came our way. We've been contacted by Ribby Hall Village, a holiday resort and spa in Lancashire. As part of their park, they have a few shops dotted around their location, small groceries, places people can pick up essential items for the weekend, gift shops, and of course, a sweet shop for the kids, and that's exactly where we come in. We've been sent a floor plan showing where the shop designers would like to place a tree and some giant mushrooms for lollipops to be placed. This adds to the overall theme of the shop and gives the children something more interactive to engage with. The top of the tree is going to have a canopy of foliage that can be fixed to the ceiling and everything's going to be fire retardant so it's safe to have indoors. As usual, we're carving from styrofoam or polystyrene using nail brushes and wire brushes to create the raw shapes. As these are going to be inside for hopefully quite some time, in direct physical reach of the public, and no doubt some rather sticky wandering hands, we're going to be going over everything that's polycarved in this video with multiple layers of fiberglass later. This will mean they're strong and durable for long term use, and can take a bit of wear and tear. For now, the carving process, arguably one of the most enjoyable parts of the project for Aiden, or in this video's case, Baldylocks we're going to be calling him, there's nothing wrong, he's just gone and shaved his head off hasn't he? Look at him all proud of himself. Lockdown struck, he's going a bit loopy with no projects on the go, so here he is in all of his eggy gloriness. The polycarving process is one of Aiden's favourite parts of the work, and once these are all been complete, we send some photos to the client for them to approve. I know you've had a tough year, we've all had a tough year, but that doesn't mean we're going to treat you to the secret that is the sticky back tinfoil, you're just going to have to accept it, alright? Once the shapes have been given an all over protective layer of foil, we're going on with glass fibre and class O resin. This gives the sculptures a level of fire protection for inside use and captive audiences. We make sure we go over with multiple layers of glass fibre, as particularly for the shapes where we're removing the poly from the inside, this ensures that the sculptures are nice and strong. As the glass fibre has that woven matte texture, we're first going over with a flow coat of resin to begin working up the surface. This can then be sanded back and either another flow coat layer applied or car body fillers, and Aiden's also using the flow coat to add some extra detail before the rest of the material sets. Once all of the resin has fully cured, we're going to be cutting the tree in half to remove the polystyrene from the inside. This is so that the shop fitters at the other end can add internal metalwork if anything more is required, and also so that small LED lights can be installed inside the tree to fit inside the little alcove cut into the trunk. Sometimes this poly extraction is a little easier said than done though. When the polystyrene has been simply popped out of the fiberglass, the shape then needs to be relaminated back together. We use strips of glass fibre on the inside, and once the resin has set, we make up the seam lines on the exterior. 
we're going to be going over with a flexible concrete mix as the surface texture for the tree anyway, so these seam lines should be easy to fill and then blend in with the rest of the bark texture. For the top of the mushrooms, we're going to be cutting small holes and installing a little steel tube inside each one. This will allow the client to stick lollipops in the top, and the steel tubes ensure the lollipop sticks have something to sit into and position them at the correct angle for display. Everything takes a lot of cleaning up, a lot of sanding, and a lot of surface preparation for the artwork. It's often something that's brushed over in the videos because it's a bit of a laborious task, but it's important to get a really high-end finish, and we take every step of the process very seriously. <laughs> With the bulk of the construction done, it's now on to the finer details. Here we've got the Ribby Hall Village logo, which we're going to be engraving as though it's cut into the bark itself. Kevin's first transferring the logo onto the sculpture, and he's using a Dremel to physically engrave this into the wood texture. Brackets have been installed at the bottom of the tree so that this can be bolted down into the floor under the carpet that's going around it. We're adding a little sign here so that people know this is a photo opportunity, they can comfortably approach and interact with the sculpture and take a photo with the rabbit that's going to be sitting on the rope swing. Here, Aidan's starting work on the top canopy section, a wire frame's been created so that we can add some foliage to be installed on top of the tree. The leaves are all synthetic, fire retardant, so they're suitable for indoor use, and can be manually manipulated on site to droop or hang as the client would like them. Oh, suit you, sir. Now, I'm sure the majority of you returning subscribers know by now that we enjoy creating everything we make by hand as much as possible. Now, whether that's using an airbrush or a simple paintbrush to do the artwork, I don't mean literally by hand and finger painting, but often we find that the simple methods are often the most enjoyable and certainly the most creative as far as we're concerned. We get things 3D scanned and 3D printed when it's absolutely crucial to the job, we have fantastic graphics printed if it's appropriate for the project, but more often than not, the enjoyment comes from making something ourselves. You can make tweaks and changes along the way if you choose to do something differently or have a creative flair in the spur of the moment, and generally speaking, you can go at your own pace. And I'm sure any of you creatives out there, whatever medium you choose to work in, and whatever method, I'm sure you guys feel the same. Final touches now, 
are ladens going over with numerous layers of paint to complete the artwork on the tree trunk. Darker layers to first get into all the grooves of the bark, and a lighter layer hitting the very top of the detail. He's also going over with a green mottling, as though the bark itself is stained with the surrounding nature. This will just help tie the tree into the grass carpet underneath, and give it a slightly less cartoony feel. With everything complete here in the studio, the tree and canopy are being disassembled, the mushrooms wrapped and packed up, ready to be heading up to Lancashire to the Ribby Hall village. It's always great when we can see final shots of our sculptures finished on location, and seeing that everything's gone smoothly. Hopefully, the visitors staying at the resort appreciate the sculptures being there just the same. We've got a couple of projects creeping in here and there and every so often, but nothing substantial at the moment. Here's hoping things start picking up for us here in the UK over the next few months, as we'd hate to give up doing what we really love. Fingers crossed for the future, and thank you to everyone across the world that's watching for all of your support. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.